everybody and welcome to this episode of the Anne's Food Show. On today's show, we are talking about a food culture that so many in the Northwest region hold dear, and that is no other than the fowl culture. But specifically, we're looking at the culture of the Kujomkeku people. Our guest today would give us an insight into the culture and the traditions of the people. So we have no other than Mr. Chong Wang. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to have you here with us today. So Thank you. I hope you'll be able to enlighten us about uh, Kujong people and our traditions and our culture. But before we get into that, can you just give us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about who you are, especially the role that you play in the Kujong community. Well, I am cheerful. Okay, what is cheerful? Thomas Songwang Gunu. Cheerful is a kingmaker, an important institution in Kijongkuku. Okay. So I am one of the kingmakers in Kijongkuku. Now, commonly in the Northwest region, when we talk about uh, uh, traditional food and traditional meals, uh, Fufu corn, jamanjama jama, and katikati is one of the top dishes that people refer to as a dish from the Northwest and often from Babanki or Kom. Yes. How did that play into, how did that come about to be that that was our, uh, the Kujom people's main dish? You know, with the movement. Yes. People could not read goods, mm -hmm. couldn't rape pigs, mm -hmm. and of course they couldn't keep cows. So they went along with whatever was light. Okay. They only domesticated uh, it's not, uh, not a bird. Then they could easily move along, but these chickens, chickens yes. that were called fowls, yes, yes. so that they could pick it at any time they wanted it uh -huh. to make a special meal. Okay. Yes. So, recently I've been getting myself acquainted with the Kujong traditions and you know, back to my roots kind yes. of thing. Yes. Now, um, how true would you consider the statement? The Kujong, the fowl is important to a Kujong tradition as collar knots could be important to a Yoruba person. Or one person said as communion is important to a Catholic. <laughs> no, you're perfectly right. <laughs> Why is that and how is perfectly it? Perfectly right. Yeah. Why do we consider the fowl that we call chicken? Yes. First, it is roasted. Yes. When you have an important visitor. Okay. Or an important occasion. Okay. And there are two important occasions I would like to talk about. Okay. Initiation okay. of the matri in some traditional societies. Mm -hmm. So what kind of initiation is that? To initiate the young men who are coming to manhood, manhood. Okay. into uh, various traditional secret and sacred societies. Okay. Yes. Okay. Secret in that, in the fact, in the in the in the in the in the, in the way that is not open to everybody. I see. Even to the men, no. The specific men are. When you have been initiated in the, like the quick form. Okay. Until you come a certain age as a man, you don't become a member of that quick form society. Okay. Those files are presented. Okay. And then for the the birth. Yes. There will be no celebration of any birth without the use of kati kati. Oh, kati, kati. I know that kati kati is a noise made when you're chopping the roasted chicken. Ah, on, a, uh -huh. on a board. Yes. It means cock, 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 cock. Uh huh. But in some way it makes ka, ka, ka. Uh huh. They will give the name kati, kati. kati. So some people, what is the, the, the baba or the kujom name of the fowl is mvu? Uh, yes, it's mvu. Okay, so traditionally it will be mvu kote. Mvu kote. Okay. And then you have. The piece of plant where they displace and and chop into pieces. Yes. Is called concocted. 
Okay. Concocted. Okay. Now, so during initiation into Quick Fun Society, the foul is given. Now, that is, at that's her, a secret that's society. That's a secret society. There no okay. secret. There's been sacred and secret. secret. Okay. It's different. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, at birth, the fowl is also a birth is celebrated. Celebrated with the fowl. Yes. Okay. Aside of aside beside the birth, also what other traditions? Uh, you have death celebrations. Okay. Can you just tell us a little bit more about how it's done at death celebration? Death celebration. There are two. Yes. We call some bad death Ooh. and a good death. What is a bad death? The person <laughs> is dead. Yes. <laughs> How can it be good and bad? <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. The Fujose. Okay. That's how I said in Babanki. Where's Fujose? Okay. The Fujose. Okay. When somebody just passes on. Ah. Just out yes. of the blue. Just that. The barrier is done. Yeah. Every child of that person. Yeah. And every niece mm -hmm. or every nephew mm -hmm. has to present a chicken. Who do they present it to? They present to the. The person who is controlling. They call for every death, there is what you call tifu, tifu, the yeah. owner of the compound. Okay, Pre so the, the owner of the compound Com is the person controlling. Yeah, yeah present to me. Okay. Uh, every child has a niece, biological children, then nieces and nephews. And nephews. That's what is done. So, what does the tifu do <laughs> with the fowls? Where you get the fowls? <laughs> They will not take and go to the court of told you. Yes. First, the biological children come and come to their ages. Okay. Well, formerly those girls who were married, the yes. husband had to stand for them. Ah. The girls who were not yet married, uh -huh. nothing was done. Okay. But we say no. All children are children. Right. Everybody should give. Right. Right. Okay. Call the first child, present the chicken. They give to the mm -hmm. somebody from the quarter. Okay. 20. Or if there are forty, there will be forty chickens. Wow. They give to the person. For the quarter, then the people of that quarter where that is will not take the chickens, go and roost. Okay, so the tifu receives the chickens and hands them ha to the quarter. Qu to the quarter. Okay, now how after the, how does the roasting happen and how how is it how do they share this? Oh, well, it's roasted outside somewhere else. That well roasted uh -huh. it's in groups. Okay. Until they brought back, they will count the number of chickens that have been brought back. Okay. Okay, then not somebody will have. To, to take the concoction. Yes. That piece of plant where you do the the cut cut on top. Yes. And do it there. Okay. And cut and it. Cut it. But make sure that all the liver mm -hmm. and the gizzards mm -hmm. are put together. Yes. All presented to the oldest man in the group. So when they give it that part. Yes. To the oldest man. Because he can give any other person he wants, otherwise he puts it in his back. Okay. Then the second. Yes. The legs. Okay. The like the. Yes. The drumsticks. Yes. Size. Cut them. Yes. And who put them that? together. Uh huh. The second person considered to be the oldest in the group. Okay. Is giving that he takes only one. Uh huh. And go around looking for those people who come after him. Okay. Order of birth. I see. And they distribute to everybody, but only one. Okay. But the gizzard and the liver, everything is given to one to person. The oldest, yeah. So then the rest now chopped up on that plant. Okay. So really the, the legs are not chopped, they're given to yes. the second yeah. oldest. Yes. Okay. So if then this part, the wings. The wings, yeah. They just cut from here, here. Yes. They are also reserved. Who gets that? Huh? Who gets the wings? Now, in distribution of windows, it's quarters. Uh huh. They'll take the kajong, kuku, quarters. Okay. That's the the neck and the head is reserved for children. Why did the children get the head and the neck? <laughs> it's not fair. They're still growing. They need to eat the meat. So, if in that family, if it was a huge family, that the oldest person could really go home with about 60 gizzards. It's not, it's no longer a matter of the family. I say when it's given to the... To the oldest person. To the man who calls the compound head. Tifu, yes. Tifu, yes. He now takes and gives to the quarter. Right. I mean, when, the, when they do the the, the, road the distribution, yes. the members of the family are no longer considered. Okay. They're out of it. They're out of it. Yes. Okay. It belongs to the to the Kijamu. 
community. Okay. Now, so this happens when there is been a. This is a, is this a good death? This That's is just bad a bad death. This is a bad death. Yes. Okay. So how does a good death happen? Now comes in where you are celebrating. We say oh, we are okay. celebrating the life of this mother, the life of this pa. Okay. Okay. So that now the celebration is the good. The celebration is the good one. It's a good one. Okay. Where okay. you go, the juice will come, dance, yes. all kind of dances will come, yes. big church will come. Yes. And for this one, every group has, has a number of chickens. chickens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then that is done at the end of uh, the celebration. Okay. You have a chicken again called the Okay. The fowl to cleanse up. I see. Okay. The memories of the the departed. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. In this one, every child, either female or male, we have bring to bring one, one. Okay. and fufu come. Okay. And uh, some come. Come. Okay. Yes. Now, who do they present this file to? To the tifu again. The again. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the tifu is a very important. Person. Very important person. Okay. I usually okay. call them the compound head. Ah, okay. So the compound head yes. is the one that receives all of this. Yes. Okay. Now, do they uh, roast that and distribute it in the same manner as with the other, the previous? The same way. Yes. Okay. But the women are excluded. Why? <laughs> so the first one, the women eat, but the second no, the one... No, one, women don't eat the first one. Ah, so women do no, not no. eat chicken from either the good death or no, bad no, death. No, no, no. Why is that? You, this, they cannot be given to them the open. That's the tradition. I talked of receiving an important personality yes. or a visitor. Yes. Well, that is your family affair. Okay. It doesn't concern the group. Yes. It is not the family that sits down mm -hmm. and uh, they look for a chicken. chicken uh, Say we have got a good visitor. Mm -hmm. I mean, not an important visitor. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything is given out except the gizzard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is given to the compound head. Okay. And uh, the legs and the wings are all chopped off. Okay, this one and now distributed to everybody. Okay. Yes. Okay, I see. Yes. Now, during marriage uh, celebrations, is there any specific thing that a specific role that the fowl has to do? Very to important. Me? Okay. Very important. <laughs> okay. Great. Kijom kuku. Uh huh. When a girl is given to marriage, mm -hmm. the family of the would-be husband. Yes. Now comes to us the girl's hand in marriage. Yes. From her family. Okay. Okay. If they found out that the family is a good one, yes. They think that they should give their daughter into that family. It's a, a two way traffic, eh? Mm hmm Because people come to ask for the girl's hand in marriage, there are people who have studied the family. When they have come and she's agreed that yes, it is possible you can come. They determine the number of us I have to bring. Okay, so when they accept the family, yes. then they determine the number oh, of fowls they have to bring. They range from three mm -hmm. to about eight, ten. Mm -hmm. They are sent for roasting. Okay. Somebody from the family of the girl mm -hmm. accompany somebody from the family of the boy. Come yes, in. yes. They go and do the roasting. Then so they, they come it together. Yes. Okay. Come and put it down. Does that signify anything in union? Unity. Or? Okay. Ah, unity. They come and cut it. Okay. As I've said. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Cut. Do the chopping. The liver. Um, the gizzard mm -hmm. and the legs. Yes. They are all put in one bundle. Okay. That's from the 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 girl's family. Yes. And given to the boy's family. I see. They go and divide it at home. I see. Okay. And then the same thing is done with those. Uh, Chickens that will come from the boss family. Okay. They give it to the girl's family. Okay. They know what to do at home. Then the other part which are not contagious, cut it down. Everybody now, woman, the children, Everybody title eats. or non title people, they eat. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for the for the marriage, the difference is those parts are yeah. exchanged. Exchanged. For each family. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Well, I appreciate so much the cultural insight of uh, preparation of, uh, well, the cultural background yes. of Katikati and, and uh, the importance that it has to, to the 
to jump keku people now just one question though is it different from the kujum keku and the kujum kitingo one and the same thing the same thing yes okay uh, okay uh, well thank you so much it's been very insightful thank you and i hope that you've also been able to get some insight into the tradition and the culture of kujum uh, keku people as regards to kati kati so the next time you eat kati kati you have to bear in mind the cultural aspect of kati kati later on our show we're going to be in the kitchen with uh, finishing up of the on the kati kati the, the the chicken that was already caught to yes caught to caught to and uh finish that but we'll also meet another side another person of the kujum uh tribe of or village a younger lady who will also give her own insight as to preparation please stay tuned and don't go away we'll be right back anna's food show your favorite food and lifestyle show the assurance for your well-being The making of kati kati begins with what is commonly known as burning the fowl. This actually is placing the fowl over a hot flame to remove the feathers and the feathers are burnt off. Traditionally, this is done by placing the fowl or chicken over fire. The chicken is turned over until all the feathers have been removed. Using a knife, you can brush off the heart to remove feathers or the parts that are really dark. When all the feathers have been removed, place the chicken on a board to open up and remove the guts. In a village setting, this would be done on a leaf. Make sure to remove and clean out the gizzard. As we know, this is a very important part of the fowl. As tempting as it can be to rinse the chicken in water, do not do that. That would actually destroy the flavor of the chicken. Instead, open up the chicken by cutting through the breast bone, open it flat. Place it on a wire rack and put it back over the fire. Reduce the flame and make sure that the coals are all red hot, but make sure that there really isn't a flame coming through to the chicken. The heat will begin the cooking process, as well as the smoke that will come up from the fire would add more, will help develop the flavor of the chicken. As the chicken begins to cook, some of the liquid would drop on the flame or on the fire on the coals and that would release or create some smoke that smoke would actually really help develop the flavor of your chicken allow each side to cook for about five minutes remove from the fire and place on a chopping board also known as a concocter using a sharp chopping knife Cut up the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Place the chopped chicken in a bowl and add salt. About one tablespoon of salt is sufficient for a whole chicken. Using your hands, mix well or you can toss around the bowl to make sure that the chicken is properly coated and well salted. Cover and let it rest for at least 30 minutes before cooking in oil. Welcome back to the show. 
We're in the kitchen segment with uh, katsi katsi that has already been cut up, or katsi katsi is the action of actually cutting up the chicken as we heard earlier. And I'm in the kitchen with Miss Valerie. Welcome to the show. Thanks. So Good to have you here. Thank you. And how closer? Now you're going to help me with this part of it, okay? Right. Now I understand that you also love to make katsi katsi. Oh, that's right. Okay, so we have the chicken now. So we're doing it the traditional style, which okay. is with parma oil, oil and salt and only. Salt only. Yeah. Yes. So that is really the traditional style. However, we're cooking it in a much more modern way than before. Because normally the traditional style, it doesn't have to go on fire. Okay, let's just put the oil in. And we can use that. Not much of the oil though, just okay. a little bit. So the traditional style, it didn't go on the fire No, at it all. didn't go on the fire before now. How, what happened to it then? Well, after having been roasted like it did, mm -hmm. cut, cut it, mm -hmm. we just took the oil raw, just mm -hmm. like it is right now. Mm -hmm. Then you pour it in a pot, put a little bit of salt, put the cut, cut inside and actually stir with your palms. Ah. And not with a spoon like okay. you're doing right now. Okay. Yeah. So this is really the ultra modern, this cooking the, it on the stove. On the stove with, with the spoon. spoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, how do you do yours normally when you make it? Oh, since we are gradually digressing from the traditional to the modern style, uh -huh. most often we add a little bit of tomato to make the sauce thicker. Why, why do you want to digress? Uh, because we think the other style was not quite good since they do it with raw oil, uh -huh. wasn't cooked enough. Uh -huh. At times while eating, you find particles of blood in the oh, chicken, which is not a little bit irritating. Yes. Yeah, so now why why boil it on fire, I want to make it a little bit modern. Uh -huh. Put a little bit of tomatoes, and at times if you don't want to use tomato, you can just use what we call country onion. Yes. In Barbaki we call it fulum. Yes, mm -hmm. to give it a little bit of flavor. Okay. Yeah, that spices of the... But meat. I thought it were the corn people that added tomatoes to their... Meat. Yeah, the corn people added, and now we started adding. We are learning from them. We are oh, really? like copying from them. <laughs> Though it's not the actual thing to do. Yes. yes. But then when you add tomatoes, you can help me stay. Right. When you add tomatoes, isn't it? Doesn't that really change the whole it nature of the dish? Changes if you like don't grind the tomato. Sauce. But if you grind the tomato, not like for this, the quantity like this, mm -hmm. just one or two okay. tomatoes are okay, okay. not okay. much. Yeah, okay. It's just to thicken like this oil. Mm -hmm. It thickens the oil and it doesn't make it look too oily. Okay. Yeah. So while exactly. eating, it's like you have sauce, a little bit of sauce in it. Yes. Yeah. But traditionally, though, Babanki people would eat with the oil. Babanki people would eat with the oil. And even mm -hmm. if they had just a slice of chicken like this, with enough oil in it, they can actually eat two, even two loaves two of food. Oh, so yes. with one tiny piece of chicken, chicken and oil. Yeah. Because with the oil, uh -huh. it makes it as good as soup. And <laughs> not, not a lot. <laughs> I guess that's why we don't eat a lot of jam and jam. Yes. Okay. So now we need to just put a little bit because we have to pinch. Pinch. a little bit. Yeah. Maybe you should taste it too. How is it looking? It's very attractive and it's like we are almost about to eat. Personally, I believe that uh, part of the cooking is done on the fire. Almost so it's all of the smoking, yes. by smoking the, yeah. the chicken. Mm -hmm. So to me, essentially, there are three key ingredients. Smoke, oil, and uh, salt. And salt. <laughs> you forgot the chicken. Well, and the chicken too, of course. <laughs> so four ingredients. Four ingredients, yeah. yeah. Okay, properly. So go ahead, have the honors. You toast it. You go ahead and tell me. Because it's one thing to see and say, and it's another to actually, to try. actually try. Yes. Okay. Let it get a little bit full. I don't want to burn my mouth. No, <laughs> I don't want that either. <laughs> okay. I don't know why you put it low on the fire a little bit. Yes. Almost ready. Okay. There we go. So to know that it's ready, really, most of the water from the chicken is dried out. Yeah. And it's almost as though it's frying, but we don't really want to know when it's almost ready, most of the water is dried off, and it's almost as though it's beginning to it's fry. fry. Yeah. But we don't really want, want to, to fry. fry. Okay. So if you get it to dry, it's really not. So I think so I guess it to know if it's actually ready. Yes, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm ready. I let all this. There's enough salt. Mm. She's actually enjoying it. So oh, this yes. is really good. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching our show today. I hope that you have learned a little bit more about the Kujam Keku people, the tradition of the Kati Kati dish, the origins and the tradition and the customs behind it. So the next time you stop to order Kati Kati or you eat Kati Kati at an event, I hope that you can remember the history and the culture behind it. Until next time, bon appétit. <laughs>